we never really write live with a bunch of people like no, that. No. Yeah, that's so that was different. That was different. And yeah. it's no Gallagher too. It's a little <laughs> yeah. stressful. I would imagine it's a little yeah. stressful. Yeah, I didn't think about it until afterwards. I was like, oh, if we really, if we, if we wrote something really crappy, like he's the one guy that would really let everybody know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're backstage at our iHeartRadio alter ego. I'm iHeartRadio's Emily Curl with Justin Richmond from the Broken Record Podcast, and we're hanging out with the Black Keys. Can we give it up for the Black Keys backstage here at Alter Ego? It's nice to see you guys again. Good to see you. See Last you. time we were playing games backstage in mm -hmm. Vegas. Yeah. This time we're chilling. We're here at Alter Ego. What's it like for you guys to be back here playing on the stage? We're happy to be back, especially uh, since it's six degrees in Nashville. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. We okay. get to get to L come to LA. By the way, we're kicking off, you know, obviously January. This is like our first big event of the year. I saw your, your ins and outs for 2024. Do you remember anything from last night? I remember talking about our New Year's resolutions. What were they again? The first was to practice more. Hell no. Next. Smoke less weed. Oh yeah, release a new album. No. Maybe. Oh yeah, right. The, yeah, yeah. the smoking less weed. Yeah, part. and some album promo. Yeah, I think it's shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Messed up already. I'm, you know, I've never had a New Year's resolution. <laughs> Not a resolutions person. No. Huh. Uh. Uh. Really? Not really. Okay. Have, wait, have you? Me? Yeah. Not really. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh. Uh. But you guys do have some new new music out. We do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about that. Tell yeah. us a little bit about about the new single out. The the first single off the new record is uh, "Beautiful People," and it just came out Friday. We wrote it with our friend Beck and uh, Dan the Automator. Wow. Incredible. We recorded it here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, you did. You recorded it here. At mm -hmm. the uh, legendary Sunset Sound. Wow. Studio in, Three, the in Prince the Room. The Prince Room. Oh. Yeah. What was it like being in there? A lot you know, of hardwoods. A lot of vintage wood paneling. You kind of feel like, you know, that's where like Shaggy and Scooby would make a record. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of have the same font too. Like yeah. Scooby Doo and they Sunset. Do. Same really vibe. Similar yeah. color. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. Is there an unreleased <laughs> album? Did you guys record the whole new album there, or we did most of it actually at at Dan Studio in Nashville, Easy Eye. We went to London, and we went to Los Angeles, and we went a few other places, I guess, to party a bit. But we really recorded uh, most of it. In <laughs> In London and Los Angeles and Nashville. Well, let's talk about the album for a second. I'm so curious, like, what sort of sides of the Black Keys are we going to see? Like, what's any thematic exploration? Like, what's it's what's kind of a party record. It's the, a party record. We were, we were, we, we we went old school. Yeah. And we decided to take our recording budget and spend it all <laughs> <laughs> traveling around, going, staying at like the cool hotels and working with the cool people who we wanted to hang out with. So we went to London specifically to work with uh, Noel Gallagher from Oasis. And we went to a famous studio called Toe Rag, and we spent four days there with uh, Noel, and we wrote and recorded. Wow. So, uh, how many songs were on the record? Three, or three from Noel. Three from Noel. Mm -hmm. That we you made wrote, with, you wrote with us in the studio. That we wrote and recorded together. Wow. wow. In so the same room, in one, and Toe Rag right. is famous for being a studio where, where you cut live, in the room, oh, and wow. so Pat was there with his drums, Noel was a guitar, I had bass, and our friend Leon was on keyboards, and we were all just in a circle in the tiny room. Wow. It's got a great feel to it. That's probably like a different way of writing and recording for you guys, right? Like uh, we, 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 we never really write live with a bunch of people like no, that. No. Yeah, that's, so that was different. That was different. And it's yeah. Noel Gallagher, too. It's a little <laughs> yeah. stressful. I would imagine it's a little yeah. stressful. Yeah, I didn't think about it until afterwards. I was like, oh, if we, really, if, we, if we wrote something really crappy, like, He's the one guy that would really let everybody know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing you didn't think about that beforehand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, you know, we called him the chord lord because he would just chord lord. He would just cycle around chords until yeah. he found the one that he liked and and then we'd keep going, you know. And he when he got in this thing where he'd be searching for a chord, we would just wait patiently. Yeah. You know? Admire. And watch him. That's <laughs> amazing. You could just see his wheels turning. It was awesome. So yeah, we also wrote a lot with Beck, who who yeah. we've known Beck. I actually met Beck when I was 16. No way. Like, uh, yeah, because my uncle had played had played with him a little bit. My uncle's a musician, and so I got backstage passes to go like meet him on the Odile tour. So it was like the first rock star I ever met was Beck. And then he gave us our first real big break because he took us out on tour in 2003. It was all very random, but here we are, like, you know, 20 years after that. Such a full circle moment. Making a record with him. Yeah. Yeah. The guy who I was, you know, I'm a huge Beck fan. Um, 
but I remember hearing him Odalay the first time. It just, it was like kind of, for me, it was like the perfect mixture of like the cool indie stuff I was into, like Pavement and John Spencer Blues Explosion, but it also had all these hooks. And it was made in a way that was super creative with the, the Dust Brothers, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of, it kind of runs a thread through because like, I kind of consider Dan the Automator to be, you know, from the same school as the Dust Brothers. So when Similar we, production. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, he, he, he was someone that, once we made a few songs with Beck, we, want, we decided to bring Automator into the mix. Yeah. yeah. I love that Deltron 3030 record mm -hmm. he made. It's so good. That's a classic record. Yes, yeah. it is. For you guys, again, that y'all have like, you know been doing this for so long, like you, you have your flow down on stage. How do you keep it fresh with not only like playing shows, but also like creating new music that you then play, li play live? Making music is, I mean, you know, that's the fun part. Playing, playing can be fun too. Uh, yeah. But we've been trying to make it all fun, you know. Like we've been, we've been uh, making it a point that when we ha have to do some work to make sure it's really enjoyable. So I, I feel like you guys have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Confirm. A big inspiration for the new record was going out and, and um, taking our 45s on tour with us and, and spinning records at places. Yeah. And seeing how the crowd reacted to different records, and that really kind of like, you know. Was, there was a huge inspiration while we were making the record in the studio. We, were, we would find records that, you know, that it was almost like a competition to see who could get like, the coolest song that also resonated oh. with the crowd, but also that no one had really heard. So you're looking for these secret hit songs. But, <laughs> you, but you can watch re, you know, in real time that when something just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. DJed before? Or is that, have you, is that we, your we don't favorite? say DJ. Well, we, spinning, we, selecting. We're, we're, we're selectors. We're selectors. selectors. You know, we, just a little bit. You know, yeah. yeah, but we've just ramped it up in the last couple of years. That's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's been really fun, enlightening. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You've been putting out a lot of stuff on Easy Eye too, man. Some yeah, incredible stuff. Stop. I just heard a song from an artist, Britty. I think is a pronunciation. Yeah, Britty. She's from New Orleans, mm -hmm. and she's got a couple singles out now. It's and, incredible um, stuff. She's just starting to bubble up, and uh, we're all really excited for her. Yeah, she's That's awesome. Great. Yeah. yeah, I love the Hermanos Gutierrez record. And he's got, he's got we a, just finished another album with those guys, and they're just killing it yeah, all over. Yeah. And he's got what uh, the record coming out by John Mook. John Mook, we've got a yeah. We've got an artist from uh, Uganda who um, we signed, and uh, yeah, lots of fun stuff happening. On the label yeah. side, how do you find the, the artists that you? I mean, man, I, I don't know. I'll be online. I'll see something I like. Someone will send me something. Any, anything really? Yeah. Wow. AI. <laughs> yeah. AI. AI. Are real. AI. Yeah. <laughs> These are all AI artists. Yeah. It turns out <laughs> the whole time. I also want to ask you guys of all the places you mentioned, you're going to all these places that really inspired the album. What was number one or the most surprising place you went to? That you enjoyed well we, we, we went to a club in paris oh yeah that was like four stories below street level oh it was a big influence on the album oh really it was like a gerbil cage <laughs> but the gerbils were that? all on drugs <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good party it was uh you know i, I gotta say we we've been to london so many times we started going yeah, there you yeah, know yeah. 20 years ago and we'd always stay at like the worst hotel this like it was almost like it was uh, we were torturing ourselves. Yeah, uh, but uh, this time when we went to go work with Noel, we uh, we you know we, we we made an effort to make sure we we figure out how to enjoy London. Yeah, so that was surprising. How did you do that? What was the difference? Just spend, spend a, a lot, lot of money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, go to the Chiltern Firehouse. And we can't be like, cheap asses all the time. Yeah, we can't be cheap asses. <laughs> so it's we, not healthy. Yeah, we learned that we had to. Someone's going to take the money anyway, so we might as well yeah. spend it on ourselves. <laughs> you know what you yeah. want? Yeah. Find the journals. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love it. Well, again, we're so happy to have you guys here at Alter Ego. I had to ask before you go. Um, do you guys have an alter ego? What is your alter ego? No, but I, 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 I did come up with this theory yesterday. Oh, I can't wait to hear. That life would be easier if everyone had their arch nemesis and everybody knew. Like, like, how, <gasps> like, like wrestling? Well, like, I was like, oh, it's, oh, Popeye's here. I hope Brutus doesn't show up. <laughs> and everything else is cool. But like, if I, if I knew. Like, if you knew. And I could also be like, I, was told, I wouldn't be gossiping about all kinds of stuff with you. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you hear about, you know, like these two. Do you have one? <laughs> do you have an arch nemesis? Yeah. Uh, let's well, spill some tea. I, let's let's, let's spray one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, You're I, thinking. No, I don't I'm really have one. But my I, mouth shut. I don't really have one, but I, I thought you know, I, I've, I've thrown some names around, but who would you like? Who would you like? Ideally, who would be? I mean, my, it would have, I mean, look, it would, someone with a real loud mouth. 
because I want it to be really entertaining. Oh, so. you want it to be like a pretty Someone vocal that match back and forth. Yeah. But wouldn't maybe fight me, so like, we wouldn't <laughs> fight. It's just like a verbal fight. Yeah, it'd be more like... Behind the back slander. Oh, Danny yeah. DeVito. He, he might be, t t he, he's too witty. I need someone, mm. Ooh. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Maybe by next year we'll have that figured out. You guys can. Well, maybe he, he, instead of alter ego, it's arch nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> the spinoff festival. Yeah, the spinoff festival. <laughs> Just invite one person you Just hate. Just get bands that hate each other to play. <laughs> <laughs> Start the drama. Yeah. Arch nemesis 2025. Okay, it's coming. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm ready for that. You, you get a lot, a lot of buzz. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay, so you guys that's, are committed. Y'all, y'all headline. Oh, oh yeah. Confirmed. <laughs> Done. Perfect. Yeah. Black Keys, thank you guys so much for being here. This has been thank so you. fun. One more time for Black Keys backstage. <laughs> Enjoy tonight and can't wait to see you at Arch Nemesis awesome. next year. Thank cool. you. <laughs>